There is another controversy brewing tonight. This one involves the Bush administration and the news media. It is the talk of Washington these days. It involves a man who was a regular in the White House press briefing room. He was free to ask President Bush and his press secretary questions on a regular basis. But it turns out he wasn't really a journalist and wasn't using his real name. And there is more to his past that is making a lot of people wonder what he was doing in the White House in the first place. Here now, is a, a Republican hack using a pseudonym to obtain a day pass to the White House press room. It's not a particularly interesting story. Unless the gentleman in question also owns several gay porn sites, <laughs> including HotMilitarySpud.com, where his naked profile indicates he is, quote, Five foot nine, two hundred pounds, brown, high and tight haircut, green eyes, and eight plus inches cut. <laughs> now, like I said, there's a lot of things being said about me out there. A lot Bottom of line is, we had a hooker in the White House talking to the president two weeks ago, and if that president's name was Bill Clinton, it would be people like John and others who rightfully would say, what's this guy doing there? Uh, Senate uh, Democratic leaders have painted a very bleak picture of uh, the U.S. economy. Uh, how are you going to work? You said you're going to reach out to these people. How are you going to work with people who seem to have uh, divorced themselves from reality? A lot of people saw that question and asked, who is this muckraking Jeff Gannon holding the president's feet to the fire so he can more easily give him a reach around? Well, is that, uh, well it's, it's really becoming an a incredible story as we go day by day. And it's, it's particularly outrageous in that the Bush administration has the worst record in working with the press of any administration in recent time. Bush has had the fewest press conferences of any president. Uh, we've now had the revelations about uh, uh, payments to journalists. So on the one hand, you have you know, no access or bought access. On the other hand, you have someone uh, planted there or at least uh, being allowed to be there, ask questions. The amazing thing is that Guckert attended a presidential press conference in Last April. month, when Armstrong Williams admitted getting paid to promote administration programs, President Bush said it was wrong. Our agenda ought to be able to stand on its own two feet. I'm confident you'll be, uh, over the course of the next four years, willing to give our different policies an objective look. Won't you? Yes. I can see that. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, Senate uh, Democratic leaders have painted a very bleak picture of uh, the U.S. economy. Uh... Yes, that was Jeff Guckert, who President Bush called on right after the president talked about objectivity. Never mind the irony, though. Everybody in Washington knows that reporters who ask tough questions of this administration are often punished, and those who tee up the White House talking points are rewarded. The question is, with Jeff Guckert, did the reward go too far? The issue here isn't whether he's a hooker or not a hooker. The issue is the larger question of this is a man who, while he is apparently still running an escort service, has access to the White House, access to the president, access to apparently classified information regarding the Valerie Plain case, the CIA agent that was outed, right. and the media, other than you and the Washington Post, are treating this the same way the White House is, as though, oh, that's just somebody's sex life. It doesn't matter that yeah. apparently they're a hooker working out of the White House. Well, I'm going to give Keith Oberman credit, because uh, he, he on he MSNBC, Keith's been, Keith's been covering this story. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, because let's, let's talk security risk. This is something that really bothered me. I want people at home to think about this. Republican, Democrat, who cares? We've got someone getting a pass every day for two years into the White House press pool who apparently has interesting ties. He's, his paper is getting paid for by a big Republican contributor in Texas, I understand. He's got all this male new escort stuff going on. He's got the memo, the CIA memo, that he questions Ambassador Wilson about. So somebody gave him access to the memo. Does nobody seem to recognize the, oh. the kind of security problem we're talking about? It was revealed that Guckert attended his first White House press briefing no later than February 2003. Talon News would not be launched until late the following month. Our number five story on the countdown, it was a bad enough thing that somebody let in a guy with no media experience, an alias, and a background as an online escort. But why did they let him in if he wasn't even pretending to represent a news organization of any kind? 
This is videotape of Duckert at the White House press briefing of February 28, 2003, so long ago that Ari Fleischer was still President Bush's press secretary. So unlikely that, as first reported today on the website Salon, Duckert, under his pseudonym Gannon, boasted online about having asked Fleischer a question. And in the context of the time, that question bordered on the unbelievable. Duckert's presence in the White House briefing room before the creation of his pseudo-news organization changes the dynamic of the controversy from mere concern over the nature of his questions and the legitimacy of his credentials. Somebody admitted him to the White House as a reporter named Jeff Gannon. Even though he wasn't Jeff Gannon, he wasn't a reporter, and he wasn't representing any media outlet. Now, I don't want to start rumors here, but isn't it sort of obvious that he had a boyfriend in the White House? Go ahead, Jeff. Jeff, go ahead. Go ahead, Jeff. For nearly two years. And no one had any idea who this guy was. Forget everything else. Assume he went in there and he was a saint. How could that be? We should know that. There should be. The Judiciary Committee of the United States Senate should be investigating it. The House Judiciary Committee should be investigating it. And if it were the other party in charge, it would be investigated. Sounds like you've got your... CNN! Me, a CNN... A CNN media analyst revealed how CNN broke the breaking of the story. Well, we found it. Or actually, one of the web, the bloggers that found it, uh, we found it through the blog. Uh, America blog. Dot com, which is a, uh, a liberal site found it. Now, we would show you that, but the pictures on that site are actually kind of racy, so we didn't want to go there. That's CNN reporting on why blogs are way more interesting than CNN. <laughs> House Press Secretary Scott McClellan says simply, in this day and age when you have a changing media, it's not an easy issue to decide or try to pick and choose who is a journalist. But there's a bizarre turn, with liberal bloggers discovering that Guckert was affiliated with several gay websites and even appearing to pose for a male escort service. All this raising questions. With Guckert's background, why did the White House grant him a daily pass? And how could he have been allowed to get so close to the president? How did he get a Secret Service press pass I, with an alias? I, I mean, I, I think... I mean, really, I cannot figure it out. Well, what do you think of my suggestion? I mean, well, I, I'm saying once he got into the White House, fine, someone was leaking him stories. But let's, I'm asking how he gets through the FBI clearance and the Secret Service. How does that happen? Well, I think there was a mole in the White House, or maybe a gerbil would be a mole. <laughs> All right, I, I apologize for that. Leslie Stoll, I thank you for joining us. <laughs> I get no joy out of saying the White House has ties to gay prostitution. <laughs> all right, I guess I, I guess I get a little joy out of it. But let me ask, fellas, seriously, you... Carl, are you awake? <laughs> Carl, open the door! Yeah. <laughs> Who is it? I mean... Georgia. I'd like to comment on the angry mob that surrounded Carl Rove's house on Sunday. The questions keep mounting. Did White House officials know of his salacious activities? Did they give him special access to information? How could he call himself a journalist? Gannon has become a symbol for the president's critics and for the bloggers who have shown once again that they can take people down with warp speed. Howard Kurtz, CNN, Washington. The fuss isn't about this guy being a conservative, because I think the points are made. There's a lot of conservatives, a lot of liberals in the press corps. The point is, <clears throat> this guy has a rather fishy background that the bloggers over the last couple of weeks at, at DailyCoast.com and also MyAmericaBlog.org have found out that you know, th this guy's business experiences go back to dealing with some rather sort of shady websites. MilitarySud.com. No! One of them. Need semen? Call 588 Military escorts. M for M. M for M. I don't know what that means. Do you? Know? Rear guard action. Okay, great. ConservativeGuy.com. Whoa. I mean, I mean this, this is, we're not making this up. Uptight, up. better late than never. Call now. <laughs> You're right. Michelle McClendon, she got thrown out for three months in 2001 because they didn't like the questions she was asking. And she was told, for security reasons, this 90-year-old reporter couldn't come into the White House. They absolutely decide who does and doesn't come in that door. If you ask the wrong questions, they punish you. And for them to now suggest that some guy who had a shady business background, we're not talking about his personal life, we're talking about his business life. He told Wolf Blitzer earlier today that he was hired to construct some websites that basically 
the web address is dealt with escort services. Yeah. We'll leave it at that. I think that that raises enough of a red flag that at least you wonder if this man should be meeting with the President of the United States and getting CIA documents. That's all we're saying. Got this it. isn't personal. It's important. Okay, well, okay. He's a <clears throat> White House correspondent who has been lobbing softball questions at the President and his press secretary. Uh, turns out he is actually a paid escort for wealthy homosexuals. <laughs> I'm not kidding about that. He actually had two jobs. One obviously was sleazy and shameful, and the other was a gay male prostitute. You know, and, 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 and Aaron, you know as well, you don't just get to ask the president a question. That's planned in advance. These guys, there's something else going on here. This isn't just some journalist who happened to get in and happened to get a pass. They wanted him there. They scripted this, and I'm frankly wondering... Again, how did he get involved with Valerie Plame? It just there's some unanswered question here higher up of somebody in the White House, and it it brings us to the larger question of Armstrong Williams and everything else as far as the whole propaganda White House. Uh, we'll leave it at that. It, it does raise lots of questions. I think I know what Bush meant now when he said he had a mandate. Uh, Now listen, to this. this is where it gets a little scary. The president said today that the United States will, does not intend to attack Iran. But then he said, quote, but you never want a president to say never. <laughs> and he said if his position does change, he will make that information public in the time-honored appropriate manner by leaking it to a gay prostitute. <laughs> My God, the White House has ties to gay prostitution. Um, <laughs> I don't, I, I don't, I do not understand, having covered the White House for as long as I did, how he got, I, I just don't get it, how he got a press pass yes. on, a, on a false name, on an I, alias. I, I, I don't I, know I, how that happened. You have to, you have to be cleared through well, the Secret Service in order to get a press pass, which you have to wear at all times. I mean, there's something behind this story that hasn't come out, and, clearly. Okay, well. Clearly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to suggest what that is. <laughs> because not only did he have a press pass, but apparently he got scoops. I want to go one step further because I, I don't but I think... I get there yet. Yeah, I don't think it's just the plain thing because I have a problem with the limited number of seats, the legitimate press corps, people stand up and ask questions which raise issues, the country watches this, and this guy, all you have to do is look at the kinds of questions, our ultimate softballs, he would editorialize supporting presidential policies and then throw him a softball Oh, question. I agree. So I don't think he should have been say, in the room. So don't, don't you find it suspicious? curious that this kind of guy with credentials that are pretty easy to check out because all you had to do is go to the web and find out who this guy was is sitting in the, the press club. Well obviously they saw an ideological soulmate or an ally but I mean this is the, pro the problem is the world of the blogger yeah. the world of the blogs. And it's becoming bloggers more can more do problem. great things well. and bloggers can do awful things. Too many bloggers okay. are partisan activists, partisan hacks. Okay. Well